take one in the car. All right, we are moving. After about six months of living and traveling in a van, working remotely and traveling to a bunch of different places, the time has come to return to Sweden. Unfortunately, I'm kind of forced to do that because I need to do the inspection of the car by the end of April. It's around 7th of April now. By Swedish law, you have to do it in Sweden, which is kind of annoying. We have a long journey ahead of us. I'm currently a while outside of Lisbon in Portugal. Today is the first day of driving and the plan is to drive around five hours to an area close to Porto, which is supposed to have a lot of beautiful waterfalls. So I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to get more north to more greenery, more lakes, more waterfalls, stuff like that. For the last few weeks, I've been in the south of Portugal, the cliffs, the sea, the beaches, everything is beautiful, but I think I'm more into like greenery and being surrounded by nature. But yeah, I don't know. I thought I would uh, take you along with me on this journey back home. It's gonna be a long road trip. I'm gonna go up through the north of Portugal, then drive over the north of Spain, through France probably, and then Belgium, Netherlands or Germany. I'm not sure exactly what route I'm gonna take. Then end with a ferry from Germany to Sweden. So it's quite a trip and I'm glad I'm taking the time because I still wanna experience things on the way, you know? This format is very new for me, but I'm excited to try it, excited to challenge myself. You're gonna see what it's like in real time as well, but I thought I would combine that with summarize the experience that I've had for the first six months of van life, which has been full of experiences <laughs> but yeah today's saturday on monday i need to work again so i work four days a week remotely so i've got two more days where i'm free now so i thought i would make some distance and really get going on this journey all right let's keep moving and we'll see what happens So I just had to stop to uh, fill up some <laughs> wipe wiper fluid. That's probably not it. And I saw that there's an Aldi here, so I'm gonna go in and buy myself a pretzel. I don't know lately, I don't know why, but I've started really liking pretzels. It's a bit weird, but I'm gonna get one or two <laughs> or three, <laughs> and then I'm gonna keep going. I got my pretzels. We only made it one hour, so we still got four hours to go. One thing I, I like to do when driving long distances is either listen to podcasts or make some calls, talk to some friends. So I'll probably do a little bit of both and just try to make time pass, make some distance, and then we'll stop for some food in a bit. Yeah, we'll see if we make the full distance today. It's been a long time since I drove like five hours in one day, so I'm a bit out of it, but let's see. now have 50 minutes left but the thing is I need to go to the toilet and I'm not talking about number one I mean if I'm doing this I might as well do it authentically because this is van life baby I do have a porta potty in the back so I could just stop and use that but I really prefer not to use that because the more I use it the more I have to empty it and emptying the porta potty is disgusting i would like to get a better toilet solution it is what it is i'm not gonna fix anything right now but i get a lot of questions about this when i showed my van tour yeah the original plan was actually not to have any toilet at all to use mostly public toilets or go in the woods which is still what i do most of the time however having a porta potty or something for backup is definitely a necessity <laughs> But the thing is, I didn't buy that before I left. After I visited a friend in Cologne, I got COVID. I was stuck on this older German couple's farm. 
but I did not have a toilet at that point. A pretty rough state and they had an extra porta potty that they didn't need and they had barely used. So they offered to sell it to me for like 30 euros or something and I was like, all right, fair enough, that's a deal. Yeah, that's my, <laughs> that's my toilet story. <laughs> Anyways. I got some food in me. I'm even more tired. It's time to get moving. To be honest, I'm feeling pretty tired and I feel a lot of resistance towards vlogging right now. But I want to challenge myself and I want to push myself. In fact, it's just two hour, 20 minutes left to the first spot and then there's a few other ones. But I'll just drive there and then we'll see. I'll follow my gut, see how I feel. It's time to keep moving. So let's go. It's about 34 minutes left. I just stopped because I drove past this really cute place that I wanted to go check out. I also need to pee and I want to eat an ice cream. So I was like, perfect. I'm a bit worried because I think my handbrake is maybe not completely broken, but I don't trust it. I was parking now at a slant and I started rolling. I put the normal brake down and then I let it go and then I stayed. But yeah, I'm just not trusting it. Let's go check this place out. beautiful place this was. I'm so happy that I stopped. It's starting raining now but I don't really care. The sun was setting behind the over there and look it's just so golden. Wow. Had a really good call with a friend. So nice to connect with people all over the world over the internet but I had to cut it short because the sun is setting and I still haven't reached my destination. It's only like 30 minutes or something but I should really get going. But yeah this was so worth it. I mean look at this place. God, I love this part. I love this part. Being able to stop like this at beautiful places that you would never see otherwise. Enough of that. Let's go. So it's getting dark. I don't really know where to go now because I had my GPS set to a waterfall, but there's no point arriving at a waterfall if it's dark. Um, I also had a place with electricity that was a little bit past the place, but it's still in very close relation to all the spots. So I might just try that. And if that doesn't work out, I'll just find something for the night and then we'll try to make the most out of tomorrow with all the waterfalls. It would be good to have electricity so then I can use my computer and everything and don't have to worry about it even if I get no electricity tomorrow. It's just a bonus. My batteries are full right now, but still, it's 35 minutes away from here so I might just go for that. Let's do it. I really love capturing beauty, man. It's so powerful. I love it, I love it, I love it. I need to do it more. It's just so nice, you know, when you go for something and it turns out to be even better than you expected. Like I saw that it was nice and all, but then, yeah, with how the light aligned and this goldenness of it, it's just beautiful. I love it, I love it.
So I arrived at the place. It's empty. There's no one here. But I don't know if there's electricity, honestly. Or maybe here, actually. It's weird. Why would there be an electrical locker if there's no outputs? Oh, here it is. Shit. Look at that. My ND filter just broke. No, my Pro Mist just broke. Even worse. Oh no. Well, it's a cool effect. God damn it. This tripod, man. Look at that. It cracked right open. Look at this. Oh well, it's a cool prism now, I guess. Well, that was eventful. <laughs> but anyways, we have arrived for the night. We got electricity, so that's nice. Not gonna do much. I think I'll just game a little bit and then chill and then sleep. And then tomorrow I'll try to make the most out of the day with all the waterfalls in the area. So that will be exciting. Hopefully the weather is good tomorrow. Oh yeah, by the way, this is what happens every time I drive. All cabinets open up. Anyways, I'll sign out for tonight and I'll see you again tomorrow. Woohoo! guys it's actually quite cold today and it has been raining but it's beautiful here it's a lot of greenery i think i should still go for at least one waterfall but then considering the weather i think it's good to stay close to this place i guess i'm just gonna get some breakfast and then maybe head off to the first waterfall i would really like to shower but i think i'm gonna go for a swim in the lake even though it's kind of cold but i'm a viking right <laughs> Let's go. So the sun has come out, which is nice. So this might actually turn out quite nice. This guy is very blue. I have a problem. I dropped my promise yesterday. The step up ring that allows me to put my ND filter on my wide angle lens is no longer working. So that sucks. So I will be working mostly with my 18 to 35 mil today, I guess. But yeah, I'm gonna pack up now and then let's go to the first waterfall. I didn't really prepare a dialogue for this scene, but yeah, I didn't go far. Like I went maybe a few hundred meters and then I looked down to my right and I saw this river. Like I had to stop. And it's really what all this is about for me, seizing opportunities when they come and not having everything planned out, but just going with the flow. There's so many beautiful places that you'd never find if you don't stop to look around like where you're going. That's a good topic for this segment, the pressure to travel, because I never set out to travel. I set out to live in other places and to me there's a big difference between those two. I mean I've been working almost full-time on a fixed schedule with a team relying on me so having the energy to do all that while also pursuing my own creative journey and traveling 
exploring, touristing, stuff like that. It's just, it's too much really, at least for me. And like the tourist part, I don't think I've ever really been a fan of that. Like this, this experience here, just going somewhere random means so much more to me than looking at a monument or a famous bookstore or something like that. It's been hard. There's a lot of external pressure to, to always travel and see things like, oh, you did go see this. It's honestly, it's quite difficult to, to manage, but I think I've just learned to tune into my own intuition and you know listen to my heart and what I want and not fall for external pressure but yeah I love places like this genuine authentic experiences you know that just happen because they're meant to happen yeah I'm like in shock right now. I did not expect to climb that mountain. This is crazy. This is insane. This looks like Lord of the Rings or something. I think I'm gonna have to get the drone out because this is just mad. There's something so incredibly majestic about mountains. Such a powerful part of Mother Earth. How she just, how ground she is. But yeah, continuing on what I was talking about before with external pressures of traveling. I think that's also why van life is so different for everyone because everyone has different obligations, different intentions, different expectations. And I think that's really what determines how your experience is gonna be like. And I think for me, answering someone's question about it, it's, it's hard sometimes because other people have other ideas of what it's supposed to be like or what it means to live in a van. To me, it's just like, I just wanna live my life, you know? But then also, this is an amazing part of it too, being able to create in nature, being so close to nature at all times and having it as my living room. But then, yeah, I didn't set out to travel the world, you know. I just set out to live in other places. The reason I chose the van was because I didn't have one set place that I wanted to move to. I wanted to have my safe space and my work set up and yeah, everything else was just kind of a bonus. But I still enjoy it. I mean, there's lots of adventures to come for sure. So it's just about finding your balance with your intention and, and what you want to do with it really and i think six months may seem like a lot but that has moved so quickly and i feel like i just left so i'm still figuring it out but i feel more at peace with my intention behind it now than before so whatever comes next is just going to be more more peace and acceptance i think which i'm really looking forward to this last month i think has been the first month with no like car issues or anything else that i need to fix it seems like my handbrake is broken now but yeah Aside from that, like, there's been no issues lately, which has been so nice. Anyways. All right, well, that was a happy accident. I did not expect to end up on a mountain today, but it was nice. But now it's time to go to the waterfall.
is incredible. I might actually put this together as one video. There's been too many beautiful moments and my biggest thing holding me from creating is perfectionism. And I think the best solution to overcoming perfectionism is just showing up as authentically as you can. So I think if I put too much pressure on one project, I'm gonna end up not releasing that project at all because it becomes too big of a project and I put too much pressure on myself to finish it in the way that I intended. So I think it's better for me to post more and not put too much pressure on each project. I'm gonna release an Instagram video about this, but it's basically the idea that everything you put out, instead of viewing that as like the final product and like it has to be perfect, I thought about, okay, what if we view it as prototypes instead? So that each work that you put out is a prototype version. In order to improve your product, you have to keep releasing versions. Otherwise, you'll never get to the final version if there ever is one, but you know, it'll keep improving for each time you press publish. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Like I don't want to expect one video to be the video, the final one or anything like it. So I just want to get things out there. I just want to keep showing up. I just want to share authentically what I'm going through, who I am and what I'm doing. So yeah, I guess these two days, this is day two of the road trip. I guess it's going to be the first video because it's going to be enough and it doesn't have to be more because it's still something that only I can do and I should be proud of myself for doing that. And like, it's me. So <laughs> yeah, if this is the end, then I hope you enjoyed coming with me like this. Please leave a comment if you have any, like, just some good vibes, really. All right, thank you for watching. Peace.